visitors of the county government and we continue appreciating because when they realize that there is a place that can be seen as a historic site, they walk to the church and together we worked on this site on a number of things. So uh, the most important for us now, building in this place or site, is what you are seeing on, the, on your right and you are going there in a short while, like a mausoleum. And then uh, at this end we have a museum, we'll go in, show you a few things. And then we have a library and we have a, a theater and that's an office. This is what UNIS uses. So I'll take you through quickly. UNIS has the, the longer draft, the longer script, oh, not UNIS. Uh, <laughs> Faith. Faith has a longer script and if she does it, then you'll be here for until uh, maybe after two or three hours. So allow me just to take them through. But I know you could do it much better than exactly. she's been reading a lot. So this way now. So the story begins in uh, United States of America with an interest of doing missions. A group led by someone called Peter Cameron Scott decided that uh, they would like to come inside Africa because the coastal Africa, some evangelism had already been done. So they decided to want to go inland Africa. And they decided to try from West Africa. So uh, Scott, John uh, Scott, with his brother David, tried through West Africa. But uh, entering into West Africa after a very short while, the two were sick. And uh, David died, and John had to go back home. A sickly, 26 year old. And when he got well, he decided, I still want to try my mission again. So he gathered around himself seven others, so there were eight. They sailed to Mombasa, they were welcomed by some Christian communities there that were already doing well, and they decided, now let's go inland. They trekked, walked, and uh, while in Kibwezi, the story is they saw the hill Zawi, and they decided to reach Zawi, that is going to be our inland, and that's where we're going to begin evangelism. Then they were looking at Africa as a dark continent, and darkness is not about the color, or maybe when there's no light, but it's about the gospel, about Christianity. So they decided to want to begin. They came all the way here and decided this is going to be a first station. They, are, they were planning to set out several stations inland Africa, and they were called Africa Inland Mission. It was a group, a number of churches, not one church. There were Baptists, there were Mennonites, there were Presbyterians, there were Maranatha, and I think an Anglican, and together they are formed their society. So they decided they'll begin their work here. The reception was not very good, but anyhow, they still call this their first mission session. After a short while, they decided to keep moving. Some were left here, and Scott and the group went. But after some time, through Sakai and Kangundo and Kijabi, Scott got so sick, and after around 10 months, as he tried to travel back home, he came back here, and passed on. The story is that he, the burial place where he was buried was in front of his heart. So we, to this day, because we are sure of the, the burial place, we think the heart is somewhere here. His heart is just in front of the heart. Uh, the burial place is in front. So he was buried here. And later on, the mission was led by another man called Alan, who was also buried in this same place. This is a famous place in the Africa Inland Church and inception of Christianity, especially in Ukambani. Today when we talk about Africa Inland Church, we are talking about over 7,000 congregations in Kenya, about two to 3,000 in Tanzania, and a couple hundreds in uh, both Sudan and, and, and Uganda. So the church now boasts of all these congregations, but it is a result of one seed, a man who sacrificed his life and came here Several interesting things about him. He was young, he was not married, he was most of the time sick, he was not very educated, even in theology. But because of his big heart and desire to do what Livingstone had done, he came all the way to this place. So this is a place that we, we honor, we like. There's, there's nothing magical about it. We don't like feel, you know, to have, you have to be silent or something. But 
at least it marks a burial place. So when uh, the former governor, Professor Kibuza Kibwana, visited this place about uh, maybe 10 years ago, he was interested in working with us. He didn't have any finances. I think through the, gov the county government and the assembly discussed, talked, and decided that they are going to assist us. So they asked us, what do you want to do? We said we like, would like to make this building and uh, then do a, a museum. We are going there just now and a theater and a library. So that anyone coming here can hear the story and maybe decide in my time what am I, am I going to do in terms of sacrificing and doing something for the benefit of many. Scott is no longer there, but he becomes alive today. There's so much, so much that he can, he can cry because when he sees all these uh, churches that have mushroomed, and the AIC has also become like uh, the birthplace for many other smaller or larger denominations. Any questions? Now let's go to the museum. <laughs> <laughs> Then you better when you're in a Jennifer. Well, the museum is to give an imagination, especially for people who want to learn, and especially the young or Christian pilgrims who are interested to know what, where, and the challenges that were there. So we have four walls in this room. There's still a lot to be done. We just have the ideas. This wall is supposed to represent what the Mkamba looks like. In the, in, the 19, in the 1800s. And so we are just trying to develop. We have some very old pictures and we have an imagination drawing. Uh, the idea of where the Muzungu found the Mkamba. So here there is no Muzungu, it's just the Mkamba, how he lived. A little in the future, our plan is, is also to display. Some of the things that are associated with the Kamba culture, Kamba people, the historic Kamba, so that someone can come here and know that this is how the Kamba used to protect himself, maybe with bows and arrows and store this and drums and creation and so on and a hat. So this is the idea of this wall. So much will still be done. And side is to explain or to show, to demonstrate that the person has now come. So we'll put more pictures, maybe do some stories, things that can be read, and imagination. And this is a picture of the first team. That's Peter Cameron Scott himself, and this is a group of eight. And one is a lady who was a sister, which is, I think, also a good thing to show that women have also been, not just adventurers, but they have also been mission-minded and doing things. So the idea of this side is to show the missionary. And then this side, we want to demonstrate the African, the Kamba evangelist. The one who takes over now, the one who is trained, the first disciples, the first followers, this side. So we are going to put more old Bibles and uh, maybe, maybe more pictures and more stories. And we are actually going to dedicate a, 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 that corner and that corner to some pictures of some well-known Kamba evangelists. One, one's name is uh, someone called Davi from Muka. We'd like to honor that person. His family is still there, his great-great-grandchildren. We'd like them to visit one time and see what uh, their great-great-grandfather did. So this is devoted for the African evangelists. So there's a picture there of actually the first Kamba Christian teaching catechism, teaching the first believers, the young people. And Christianity believes in starting with the, the young people. And then this corner, or this wall, will show where we are now, the idea of where the church is now. So we will display much more on this. Now, for example, this large building is maybe the Cathedral of Africa Inland Church. It's a church in Nairobi. It's called AAC Milibani. It looks just like that. 
We'll also display our bishops and some of the leadership today and maybe show the, the structure of the church. Now, anyone coming into this room will be able to see from four corners, imagine where we came from and where we are now. Especially the young people, I think this will be something, we think this is something very important. Again, the county government has promised us at some point, they'll ask some experts and professionals to come and help us know how to put that imagination. No questions. The next room. Theater hall. Um, this will be used for discussions, for classes, for teaching. We'll use a screen to show maybe whatever we want to show in terms of what we do, but it's also open for other people to use. In the last days, this has been used by seminars, conferences, workshops, by the Ministry of Education, and even some uh, pastors and so on. So this is an open place that anyone wanting to come and use uh, can come and use. So it's just up here. Uh, this is our library, and the goal for this library is to have literature for missions, to show uh, what others have done in way of reading. So we are just beginning, we've been collecting, and we hope to bring a lot here, both old books and new books, so that somebody who wants to do research on missions, especially about the inception of Christianity in Cumberland or in Africa can also come. But also, we display some theological books and Bibles, Christian literature, right here. And this, is, this will be open for the community, of course, for, uh, with a membership fee. And we hope from here that uh, we can have more people coming in, and especially the young, to learn. Maybe we want even to encourage African writers. This is one of our our goals so that we can display a lot. Someone is helping us to get some books from a famous man called John Beatty. Professor is late now. would like to display them. He discusses theology a lot, the African theology and also the inception of Christianity in Africa and what he thinks and what other Africans think. So we'll have uh, would-be controversial books around here of people even who thinks Christianity maybe was wrong or something. This is just a place to open the mind. So since your mind is open now, I think we can go. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have very important trees here. Uh, on that far end, we have a tree that was a nandi plane tree that was planted by the former governor, Professor Kibuza Kibwana. And we have another one that was planted by the African Inland uh, Church presiding bishop, Reverend Abraham Mulwa. And just behind there, we have another one that was planted by the AIM director of this region. His name is Reverend Anthony. This is a small place. It has its own title D, given by the government, of course, in honor of uh, this mausoleum by the request of the church. Otherwise, the rest of the compound around is for the primary school. But African Church is the sponsors of the primary school. We have a dispensary, and we have a secondary school, and then the church, and all the neighborhood around. Any question, yes. I can allow now. Then we go to the church. There is a famous chapel that we'd like you to see. Yes. 